Hello, this is David Wilcoxon, and in this video, I want to show you the deception of the 70th week of Daniel 9 prophecy. In the timeline of the 70 weeks of Daniel 9 videos, I prove that the prophecy declares that Messiah the Prince appears after 69 weeks are completed, meaning in the 70th week. And I show that it points to his multi-year ministry, and that he died in the middle of the seven years of the 70th week. In the People and the Prince video, I prove that the people are the Jews and the Prince is Messiah. When we use Daniel's definitions, we see the harmonious narrative, which clarify who confirms the covenant in Daniel 9.27, Messiah the Prince. In the fulfillment of Daniel 9.24 videos, I prove how Messiah and the Jews fulfilled the six things in Daniel 9.24 in the first century, so we're not waiting for them to be fulfilled by the Jews in the end times. In the covenant in Daniel 9 videos, I prove that the covenant in Daniel 9.27 is the everlasting covenant of mercy previously referred to in Daniel 9.4. The passage isn't saying that it's a seven-year covenant, but that it's confirmed in the seven years of the 70th week. In the middle of the seven years of the 70th week, Messiah confirmed, ratified, the everlasting covenant with his blood to atone for our sins, which ended the need for temple animal sacrifices. I showed how the 70th week of Daniel 9 is the one prophecy that foretold when Messiah would appear to carry out his multi-year ministry and die for our sins. Applying it to the end times or his enemy, the Antichrist, makes no sense. Please watch those videos so that the explanation in this video makes sense. By showing how the 70th week of Daniel 9 was about Messiah's multi-year ministry and his death for our sins, I've proven that it's not about an end-time seven-year tribulation period featuring a one-man Antichrist. And I realize that our minds have been conditioned to believe in the futuristic 70th week of Daniel, the seven-year tribulation period, and that it's difficult to put that concept aside. I realize that it seems absurd that a minority of people today believe that the 70th week of Daniel was fulfilled after the 69th week, that it was about Messiah, and that it's not about the end times or the Antichrist. I realize that this leaves people with a dilemma. If it's not future, what about the prophecies in the Olivet Discourse, Second Thessalonians 2 and Revelation, which are associated with the concept of a future 70th week of Daniel, the supposed end times seven-year tribulation? In this video, I'll explain how the false futuristic narrative came into existence. Then I'll summarize the fulfillment of those prophecies so that you can see how they don't take place during the last seven years. I pray that you'll be able to see the grand deception of the enemy who has misled the end time saints with a false script of how the end times will play out. Don't seek to defend a belief, seek to know the truth. It's very important to know where we're at on the Revelation fulfillment timeline and what prophecies are left to be fulfilled so that you're prepared for Messiah's return. So let's talk about when and why the futuristic prophecy fulfillment explanations were created. As the popes of Rome rose in power, Messiah saints began witnessing against their man-made doctrine. The popes responded by banning and burning the handwritten scriptures that teach the pure gospel. They taught in Latin to hide the gospel and used Catholics to kill millions of saints during the Dark Ages to eliminate their witness. By 1514 AD, the popes were so effective at wiping out the scriptures and the saints that they proclaimed that all of Christendom was under their authority and that there were no witnesses left against them. Then the Holy Spirit moved in the saints' lives to allow them to read the scriptures, which caused them to see that the popes were teaching a false gospel. They discovered that the popes of Rome and their Catholic Church were the enemy of Messiah and his saints. They translated the scriptures into English, German, and other languages. And with the timely advent of the printing press, the little book of Revelation 10, the printed Bible was spread worldwide. In the 16th century, all of the Protestant reformers rightly proclaimed that the office of the papacy, the popes of Rome, fulfilled Bible prophecy as the little horn of Daniel 7 the son of perdition, the man of sin of 2 Thessalonians 2, and the beast of Revelation, who leads the harlot church of Rome. To seek to eliminate their witness, the popes empowered Ignatius Loyola and his so-called Society of Jesus to counter the Reformation and deflect blame away from the popes. I say so-called because the Jesuit superior general is the false prophet who pretends to be a Catholic priest in order to make war with Messiah and his saints. He's not Catholic. He's a Satanist. That's a bold statement, so let's see how John describes the general in Rome. Let's start with the definition of a beast in the New Testament. 
in Daniel 2. In Daniel 7, the four beasts point to, to the controlling kingdoms of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, with the last one, Rome, staying in power until Messiah returns. So when it comes to Revelation, people assume that a beast in Revelation 13 still points to a kingdom. But that's not true. In Titus 1, 7-16, we see Paul contrasting blameless bishops with unruly, vain-talking, deceiving, evil beast. So he's pointing to false bishops in the church. In 2 Peter 2, we see Peter talking about false prophets, saying they are evil-speaking brute beasts. Jude 1 also points to ungodly men, brute beasts, creeping into the church. So we see that in the New Testament, a beast can be a leader in the church who is a deceiving, evil, false priest. Revelation 12 and 13 describes the Satan-empowered leaders of the Roman beast kingdom who make war with Messiah and his saints. Revelation 12 points to the pagan Roman emperors who persecuted Messiah's saints during 10 persecution periods, making the birth of Messiah's ecclesia of saints very painful. The sea beast of Revelation 13 points to the Antichrist beast popes, who rose to power out of the sea of people of the ten kingdoms of the fallen Western Roman Empire. The popes ban and burn the scriptures, use Catholics to torture and kill tens of millions of Messiah's saints during the Dark Ages and Inquisition, remove the second commandment about making and bowing to graven images, carry out the blasphemous Eucharist ceremony which denies Messiah's one-time sacrifice for sin, and teach concepts which are contrary to scripture. The Antichrist beast popes are fake priests who teach a false gospel of works through the sacraments and a false intercessor in Mary that denies Messiah, which has deceived billions of Catholics. The earth beast of Revelation 13 points to the Jesuit superior general, the black pope who rose to power out of the earth, the land of the Vatican. Instead of being called the beast, he is called the false prophet. The general has used his Jesuit priest to spread around the world teaching the false religion of Romanism, which now causes 1.3 billion Catholics to have the mark of the beast on them, as they revere the mark on the forehead, your thoughts, and obey, mark on your right hand, your actions, the Antichrist beast pope. Now that we can see who the wicked leaders are, let's get back to the narrative of how the general fulfills his role as the false prophet. The general had Jesuit priest Francisco Ribera, a brilliant man with a doctorate in theology, write a 500-page commentary with an opposing view, where he manipulated prophecies in the book of Daniel and Revelation to create an end-time seven-year tribulation period, during which most of the prophecies in Revelation would supposedly be fulfilled. It features a one-man Antichrist making a seven-year Israel peace agreement, the supposed 70th week of Daniel 9. It was Ribera who pushed the narrative that the 70th week of Daniel has not been fulfilled yet and that it's about an end-time seven-year tribulation period that features a one-man Antichrist. This effectively deflects blame away from the Pope as the Antichrist beast to cause people to believe that it's fulfilled by one man rather than by the office of the papacy. Another Jesuit scholar, Roman Cardinal Robert Bellarmine, followed behind Francisco Ribera. He promoted Ribera's concepts in his work, polemic lectures concerning the disputed points of the Christian belief against the heretics of this time. His writings claim that Paul, Daniel, and John had nothing to say about the papal power. He taught that the Antichrist is a single individual who would not rule until the end of time. The Protestants rejected the Jesuit teachings for hundreds of years. To overcome this, the Jesuits had a priest named Manuel de Lacunza promote their futuristic explanations in the work The Coming of Messiah in Glory and Majesty under the pen name of Juan Josephat ben Ezra, a supposed converted Jew. The pseudonym may be seen as a way of making the work acceptable to the Protestants because it's from a Jew and diverting attention from the author's station as the Inquisition taught believers that the Jesuits were the enemy. In the 19th century, Dr. Samuel Maitland advanced the Jesuits' teachings. Then, Minister Edward Irving promoted the concept of a secret rapture. John Nelson Darby created the concept of dispensationalism, which says that we're in the time of the Gentiles and that Yah the Heavenly Father will deal with the Jews in a future seven-year tribulation period. The Reference Bible of Cyrus Schofield established the deception in America as Baptist churches accepted it and millions of copies were sold. Louis Sperry Schaefer, an American theologian, became associated with the ministry of Schofield, who became his mentor. 
When Schofield died in 1921, Schaefer moved to Dallas, Texas, to pastor the First Congregational Church of Dallas, where Schofield had ministered. Then, in 1924, Schaefer and his friend, William Henry Griffith Thomas, realized their vision of a simple Bible-teaching theological seminary when they founded Dallas Theological Seminary, which was originally Evangelical Theological College. Dallas Theological Seminary is the key place where the Jesuit concepts have been taught to thousands of pastors, including today's top TV and radio personalities. John Wolverd, Charles Caldwell Riley, Hal Lindsey, Chuck Swindoll, David Jeremiah, J. Vernon McGee, Ron Rhodes, and Dr. Thomas Ice of the Left Behind Books and Movie series are a few of the key graduates. From DTS, the leaven of the Jesuits' futuristic deceptions has spread worldwide so that they mislead most people today. The enemy has worked hard to saturate our minds through repetition with the false narrative of a future 70th week of Daniel, a seven-year tribulation period featuring a one-man antichrist. It's promoted in study Bibles, the Left Behind movies, videos, podcasts, radio shows, and websites. The bottom line is that the narrative about the 70th week of Daniel 9 being about a seven-year tribulation period that features a one-man antichrist is a false concept, as the 70th week of Daniel 9 was about Messiah's ministry and death for our sins. This means that the foundation for the many prophecies we've been told are about the end times is built on a faulty foundation. This is why I've said that you need to know the truth about the 70th week of Daniel 9 to understand the Olivet Discourse and Revelation. The enemy has created a false end-time script that points to a seven-year tribulation period during which the supposed one-man antichrist makes a peace treaty with Israel, and then there are three and a half years of relative peace. At the midpoint, the son of perdition, the antichrist beast, reportedly enters the rebuilt Jewish temple and proclaims to be God. They push the concept that Daniel 12, the Olivet Discourse, Second Thessalonians 2, and most of Revelation are fulfilled during the last three and a half years. But all of that is a false narrative based on the concept of the futuristic 70th week of Daniel. When you see that the 70th week is not about the end times, then you need to take another look at the prophecies in Daniel 12, the Olivet Discourse, 2 Thessalonians, and Revelation. The BibleProphecyDecoded.com website provides a learning track where you will find links to PDF summaries, videos, and audios. You can request free PDF copies of the books about the 70th week of Daniel 9 the Olivet Discourse, and Revelation, or you can order printed books. I pray that the 70th week of Daniel 9 study series has opened your eyes to see more of the glory of our beloved Messiah, that it's given you tangible evidence of for your faith and validation of the Bible and the deity of Messiah. We're in a spiritual battle, and we defeat the enemy by teaching the truth of prophecy fulfillment to expose the enemy's deceptions. You don't have to have all the answers or be able to explain all the prophecies. Your role is to plant seeds so that those who are fertile soil will see the truth. I've created one-page summaries about the 70th week of Daniel 9, the Olivet Discourse and Revelation, which you can save, print, and share. I recommend starting with the 70th week of Daniel 9 one-pager, as it's the most important prophecy to understand. Simply give it to people and ask them to read it. If it helps open their eyes, they can pursue the truth on the website, which gives them a learning track of studies, videos, audios, and the book. I pray that the Spirit moves in these last days to remove the scales of the enemy's deceptions from people's eyes so that they can see the glorious truth. I pray that Messiah will raise an army of people who share the truth of prophecy fulfillment to expose the enemy's deceptions, to cast them down from power, to set the captives free for a glorious harvest of souls in the end times for the glory of our King. In the next video, I'll summarize all the important points of this 70 Weeks of Daniel 9 Decoded video series to help people see the big picture of the glorious fulfillment and the grand deception that's based on it. That's all for today. I love y'all. Shalom.